hustlers welcome back to the channel thank you so much for tuning in if this is your first time we are a gang or group of hustlers here we talk about making sense of our finances making better informed decisions when it comes to our personal finances and of course living our best lives so i hope you do click that subscribe button and join our family um yeah and we'd just love to have you here um before we go any further i just want to say thank you so much for 2000 subscribers <laughs> this is so exciting thank you so much guys for the support for the love for the comments for the shares um for the dms for the emails like thank you so much for all of that it really really makes me so happy to know that my platform is impacting and changing you guys' lives and we are having the necessary conversations about personal finance and the stigma about talking about money is being um, done away with and we are being more comfortable um with our decisions our money um our, you know our money habits and all of that stuff so thank you so much there is a giveaway in this video so please do watch the video until the end to find out what the giveaway is i hope you guys do enjoy it um yeah i'm really excited so thank you so much today's video is an introduction to the series of making sense of where i'll be making sense of personal finance um term myth um, habits phenomena anything that has to do with personal finance that you know you want to make sense of you want to understand better we will sit down together and go through it and understand it better and today we are talking about interest rates everything that has to do with interest rates please know that this is an educational video it's an informational video it's not personal finance and um, advice so please if you are looking for that specific tailor-made advice please see someone who's registered uh, with the FSCA who will put your needs above theirs cool so um, let's just get started get right into it what is an interest rate or what is um you know what is this thing that we're talking about i'm sure you've heard of the term especially in south africa with so many talks about the interest rate the ripple rate cuts and there's been so many movements and i thought let's just sit down have this discussion and talk about what it is and how does the interest rate impact you as an individual so an interest rate is the amount the amount a lender uses um um, for the use of an asset so they basically charge you um for the use of an asset and it is um um calculated or expressed as a percentage of the principal amount i know this sounds a bit like gibberish but basically what that means is if you go to the bank to borrow money from the bank let's say you borrow twenty thousand rand the bank is going to charge you interest for borrowing that money or for the use of that asset um, which is in this case cash so for you just going to the bank to borrow money they're going to charge you for borrowing that money so essentially you're going to pay the twenty thousand rand that you owe plus the interest um, which is then going to be the total amount you're going to pay over the period. So interest rates are quoted on an annual basis. So normally if you see an interest rate, it's going to have the interest rate PA, which is per annum. And this is the annual percentage rate or the APR rate. These are normally quoted on debt, things like credit cards, car loan repayments, home loans, etc. So interest rates are quoted on an annual basis um, and normally when you see an interest rate it's going to have the interest rate number and it's going to say percentage and PA which normally relates to per annum and this is the annual percentage rate or the APR. This is normally quoted on um, debt, <clears throat> things like debt like credit cards, um, car, home lo uh, car loan repayments, home loans and stuff and this does not take into account compounding. So with this APR rate normally simple interest is applied. I will explain explain what simple interest in a minute then we have what is known as the annual percentage yield or the APY this is something that is um so this is interest that is earned on a savings account so if you have a savings account at the bank you get what is known as the APY the annual percentage yield and um this takes into account compounding cool so what is simple interest and what is compound? Okay, so simple interest is interest that is calculated on the principal amount and it uses the simple interest formula to calculate it. So what this basically means is that it takes the principal amount, which is the amount that you're gonna borrow at the bank, in this case, we're using 20,000 Rand, times the interest rates, let's use 8.5% or 8% as an interest rate, times the time or the period so if this loan is going to be for five years that's what it's going to be and that's the simple interest rate calculation principal times the interest rate times the time to find out what the total interest will be that you will be charged on the specific thing cool so compounding interest is interest that is calculated on interest i know this sounds a bit weird 
give me a minute to explain so this is interest on interest and this is interest calculated on the principal plus accumulated interest on the principal cool let's just break it down let's say for example you have put in 300,000 rand into a bank account or savings account and you are getting 15 percent interest every year right so 300,000 times 15 percent is going to be um, interest of about 45,000 so at the end of that one year you're going to have 45,000 interest earned on that 300,000 when we go into year two when we calculate the interest we don't calculate the interest on the 300,000 we calculate it on the 345,000 remember 300,000 is what you put into that account plus the interest which is 45,000 rand at the end of the year you have 345,000 when we are calculating interest in the second year provided that you leave the money in the account you don't withdraw anything you still leave it as is the 345,000 is now becoming your principal amount or your original amount that we use to calculate then interest is going to be calculated on that and so on and so forth so it's interest that is calculated on interest on interest i hope that makes sense so simple interest is just the principal amount the interest rate the period and then compounding interest is the principal amount um, and then the compounding periods plus the interest. I hope that makes sense I will put the formula on the screen so you guys can see the difference between the two formulas um, Yeah, so that is what compounding interest is. Okay, so when we're talking about interest rates We have to look at nominal effective and real interest rate. So what is effective interest rate? This is an interest rate that takes into account compounding and this is normally the more accurate measure of interest and I'll, and I'll explain why in a, in a minute and then nominal interest rate does not take into account compounding right and then real interest rate now this interest rate takes into account inflation and what real interest rate is there to do is to give you the real rate of return of your saving or your investment what it does it takes the nominal interest rate and it subtracts it um, so it's nominal interest rate minus um, inflation rates to find out what the real rate of return is and what the real rate of return you're going to be getting back so if you have money in a savings account and um, you're going to be getting 8% nominal interest rate and the infl inflation rate is let's say at 10% 8% nominal interest rate you're going to be getting on that savings account if you take 8% minus 10% you're at a negative 2% meaning your money is not growing ahead of, of inflation and I speak this all the time especially in my emergency fund video i really really reiterate this how important it is to make sure you are putting money away in your emergency fund or in a savings account that is an inflation beating interest rate and why is this important is that the real rate of return is going to be in a positive um um form and of course savings account doesn't build your wealth or give your wealth essentially but you really want your 100 rand last year to buy you the same things 100 rand today would be or in a year's time would buy you i hope that makes sense so nominal <clears throat> does not take into account compounding and effective does take into account compounding and this is seen to be the most accurate accurate way of calculating interest now when you are comparing bank accounts for a savings account for example always use the effective rate effective rate is compounding essentially effective and nominal start off being the same but effective changes based on how many times that specific account is compounding so if something is compounded annually annually effective and nominal will be the same but if um, something is compounded quarterly or half yearly or monthly or daily then the more something is compounded the higher the effective rate is so when you are comparing um, savings accounts it's always best to look at how often is it compounded and what is that effective rate essentially is because that's going to show you effectively how is your money growing and how is your money affected by compounding i hope this makes sense so if you're comparing a savings account from bank a bank b bank c and you want to see where to put your money look at the effective rate um, because the effective percentage rate is the best to look at in terms of how often is that going to be compounded it's going to give you it's, the, it's seen as or it's said at, to be the most effective or accurate rate of um, interest rates i hope that makes sense cool so um, I mentioned that um, real rate of return or the real interest rate takes into account inflation. So now let's define and get through what inflation is. Okay, 
So I've got the definition of inflation right here in front of me. We're going to go through it together and I'll just explain what it means. So basically it says that inflation is the quantitative measure, right, of the rates which an average price level of a basket of selected goods or services in an economy increase over a period of time. Let's just simplify that. It's basically the rise of the general um, level of price where one rand, right, effectively buys you less than it did in previous periods. And I'm sure you guys have seen this. Let's just take for example, what this basically means is that if in a basket you've got bread, brown bread, milk, sugar, flour or whatever else in that basket and you probably in 10 years, 10 years ago, you spent 10 rand essentially you're not going to spend a, a 10 rand on those items today because why the level right of prices where one rand is now buying you less than it did in pre previous periods and that's all that what and that's what basically means um that's what inflation basically means so it's just like the the level of how things or one rand loses its buying power over a period of time so that's why it's important when you are saving money it has to be inflation beaten beating so that you get the best um return possible return from that savings the next thing i want to talk about in terms of interest rates is how do the banks um affect interest rates and how do they influence and have power over in over interest rates especially in south africa so in south africa we've got something that's called the south african reserve bank which is basically the big banker or um you know the the banker of the private banks let's just call it that and what how do they influence in, in interest rates is basically they have something that's called the repurchase or the repo rate and this is the rate in which they charge um private banks for borrowing money from them so this is the rate in which they charge private banks for borrowing money and this is known as the repo rate right so i'm sure you've heard of this you've seen it in the news or oh, the repo rate has been cut the repo rate is increasing or whatever that is basically essentially the rate that the south african reserve bank charges the private banks for borrowing money from the reserve bank so then what the repo rate does is that it serves as a benchmark right for the private banks in terms of what they can charge for short-term um, um loans and it's just like basically the benchmark so if the repo rate is at a specific percentage the banks then will be um they'll make decisions based on what the repo rate is saying so essentially if the repo rate goes up essentially banks are gonna increase their interest rates for deposits so if you are putting money into the bank um, and saving it into a savings account you'll get a higher interest rate and that's then increasing the the interest that they charge on people that are borrowing money from them because why they have to pay more to acquire the repo funds from the reserve bank because the repo rate is higher so they essentially have to recoup more so they have to give an incentive for people to be putting money into the bank basically deposits and also people borrowing from them they have to charge them more so they can still make their marginal profit margins as well and not make a loss they have to essentially make a profit they are running as a business so the repo rate how does it affect it it affects us so if you have seen maybe if you have a home loan um, and it's variable you would have seen a message from your bank saying that they will adjust your monthly prepayments because now the interest that you've been charged is way less than what you've been charged before um i just got an sms from my um savings account bank saying that i'm gonna from the first of july i'm gonna be receiving less interest than what i was being offered which essentially makes sense because now they are paying less for acquiring the repo rate funds meaning they have to charge less for um people borrowing money essentially they can't give me more interest they also have to adjust the interest they're giving me on my savings account so it's all basically linked and related so i've touched a bit on variable interest rates let's just define what a fixed interest rate is versus a variable interest rate a fixed interest interest rate is an interest rate that does not change that remains the same over the period of the loan so this is fixed this is it just remains the same and this is mostly for people who don't want to inquire or take on the risk of it changing they just want to know basically how much will they pay on interest for the duration of the loan and that's all they'll pay and then variable basically means that this changes right this is 
a changing interest rate over the period of over a period of time it has a bit more risk on it because obviously when the repo rate goes up and the interest rate is effectively increased this also increases your repayments on maybe your home loan or your car repayment and all of that so it's variable it moves it fluctuates depending and this is very linked to inflation as well so depending on inflation where is inflation going where's the repo rate going um with the interest rate going that the private banks are giving you then this interest rate is highly affected by those things so if you are someone who um you know essentially uh, uh, um the variable interest rate is also linked to your credit um, score. So the rate that you get is linked to your credit score. It's linked to the lender. Who are you getting this loan from or the funds from? And also the product type. Is it a car loan? Is it a home loan? Is it a personal loan? Is it a short-term loan? All of those three things impact what the variable interest rate you'll be getting at the end of the day is. Cool. That is it. I hope I covered everything. If there's anything um, in this video that I didn't explain or maybe something didn't make sense to you, please do drop the question down below let's have the conversation about interest rates if you did get an interest rate cut on some of your um, debts I would highly suggest if you can afford continue paying the same amount you are paying before the adjustment so you can pay this off quicker because obviously you are being charged less interest and if you are paying a higher amount you are potentially paying off this debt much quicker and that's reducing the repayment period and reducing the total interest that you would pay back um, so yeah, I hope you guys found this video very helpful as always keep hustling I'll catch you guys on my next video. I'm lying. No, we have the giveaway. Oh my gosh I almost forgot cool. So the giveaway is a 500 Rand voucher or amount that I will contribute towards an investment of your choice and the investments I will list um, I, will, I will be doing is easy equities Frank group and fed group so those three you can choose between those three and i will deposit 500 rand into um your account i won't deposit it into your personal account i'll be depositing it into that specific investment of your choice to either help you get started if you're a new investor or to help you obviously grow your portfolio if you're an existing investor so it's fed group it's easy equities and it is frank group all you need to do to enter the giveaway is just basically comment down below and um tell me what um, one thing that my videos have helped you with is it budgeting is it saving is it investing anything that my videos um, have helped you with or have changed your mindset about money um, I just really want to know how my videos have impacted you in your personal finance journey and yeah the the, the video um, when it will be announced in the following videos um, so yeah guys comment down below let me know how my videos have impacted you and i hope you are the winner of the 500 rand um, um investment contributed contribution or voucher uh, so yeah as always guys keep hustling i'll catch you guys on my next video thank you thank you so much for 2k subbies bye